We've spoken about the James Webb Space Telescope before. We've discussed some of the images that have come out from the telescope's data, and we've also discussed how the telescope is able to make the findings that it does. One of the things this space telescope can do is spot the earliest galaxies in our universe, the ones that formed first at whatever point after the Big Bang. And the telescope has now discovered six such galaxies which seemingly shouldn't exist. Scientists think that galaxies began forming about a billion years after the Big Bang, which occurred 13.8 billion years ago. But when scientists started looking at data from early galaxies, they discovered that just 13.1 billion years ago, there were giant galaxies with 100 billion stars in them. This is just impossible. That is, in just 700 million years after the Big Bang, there was a galaxy with 100 billion stars. At that point in time, there should have just been tiny baby galaxies with a handful of stars. And yet, it seems like that is really not how the universe began. These massive early galaxies are thought to be a physical impossibility, and yet they existed. And they're called galaxy breakers, and as expected, they are appending our entire understanding of how early objects formed in our universe, especially early galaxies. I'm Sandhya Ramesh, and this is Pure Science. To understand the significance of this finding and why it is breaking so many scientists' minds, we first need to understand how the universe formed. After the Big Bang occurred, within just one second, the universe started to cool and expand. In just the first second, a bazillion things happened, which we're not going into right now. About 20 minutes after the Big Bang occurred, the universe would have cooled drastically and there would just have been a lot of hot, opaque plasma. Then about 18,000 years later, neutral hydrogen and helium started forming. This goes on until 370,000 years after the Big Bang. All the photons that were buzzing around at this period is what we detect today as the cosmic microwave background or the grains in old TVs. Then came the Dark Ages, which is 370,000 years to 1 billion years after the Big Bang. At this time, there were no sources of light in the universe. At 370,000 years, the universe was transparent, but hydrogen had just started collapsing, forming the very first stars. Suddenly, there was dim light, pale and here and there in places. Over the next 3 million years, as the universe expanded and the stars started moving away from each other, all light became redshifted and they shifted to non-visible wavelengths and the entire universe was dark again. Then we think that about 500 million years later, the earliest galaxies began forming and finally the dark ages came to an end one billion years after the Big Bang. After that, the universe started to look like it does today and everything beyond that is irrelevant to us now. But this is how scientists believed that galaxies would have started to form about a billion years after the Big Bang. That was until the James Webb Space Telescope was launched two years ago. Ever since the telescope's first data set last year, of which these findings are a part, the telescope has changed our understanding of early universe. Because it covers a broad range of infrared light, it can detect farther galaxies than ever before, galaxies that are extremely redshifted. There's a simple way to visualize how the Webb telescopes peeks into the early universe and sees the very first stars and galaxies. Everyone loves the balloon example to explain the expanding of the universe. So, imagine a galaxy formed right beside another when the balloon is just starting to get inflated. As the balloon expands, the distance between these two galaxies grows and grows faster and faster. This is how our universe expands three-dimensionally in space. But in our universe, the light emitted by these early galaxies is traveling towards us. And we are moving further away because of expansion. By the time this light reaches us, the source galaxy would have moved away and evolved or would have matured and stopped evolving. 
But what we are seeing is the light from when this galaxy was very close to us. So effectively, we are looking at what this galaxy would have looked like 700 million years after the Big Bang. This is how the Webb telescope can see back in time. Now to the findings. In July of 2022, in the first data set from the telescope, and just about a week after those incredible stunning first images were released, the team working on galaxies in the data discovered an anomaly, what looked like a different looking galaxy. Upon further analysis, they found the first impossible galaxy breaker, the one with 100 billion stars. They looked more and they found five more the very next day. These are all dead galaxies, so to speak. They have stopped forming new stars and thus are not growing in size or mass. But these galaxies still have way too much mass. They have way too many stars. Stars are formed from hydrogen collapsing on itself. And at that point, when these galaxies formed, there just wasn't enough hydrogen to form such billions and billions of stars. So what is the explanation then? What could have caused these galaxies to be visible to the James Webb Space Telescope? There is an obvious explanation, which is that there is another way for early stars and galaxies to form, something that would catalyze the speed of formation other than our current model that explains that stars and galaxies form slowly as hydrogen builds up. So now there are already six examples that disprove our current theory of galaxy formation. This is a really big deal because it is a basic understanding of the universe and how it formed when we attempt to explain how galaxies formed. And these findings will make us rethink many other theories we've derived using this assumption. So what does that mean now? Do we start updating science textbooks? Well, not so fast. We need to verify these findings. To do that, first, the distance needs to be verified again. So the team will perform spectroscopy and make it more accurate. Second, the scientists also have to confirm that all the brightness and mass in these early galaxies actually come from stars and not something else, say a quasar. Coincidentally, one of these six galaxies was also observed by the Webb telescope separately and the telescope detected a quasar. A quasar is what happens when gas is falling into a supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy at a very fast rate and the black hole then starts to glow and shine very brightly. So an alternative explanation is that instead of stars, this is probably black holes glowing in these early galaxies. Solving this puzzle will let us understand multiple things. How else can stars form apart from what we think? How did early galaxies form? Whether galaxies can shine bright just from giant quasars? And finally, whether something other than stars was also emitting light in the early universe? Answers to these will probably transform or at the very least drastically alter what we think we understand about the early universe and by extension, how we got here.